Thanks for joining us once again for your update from the city of New Hope. The mayor is with us once again. Welcome, Mayor Kathy Hempkin. How are you today? Hi, Dave. Just fine, thanks. Great day outside. It is great. Thanks for being with us. You look good there with the golf shirt on in front of the golf course here in New Hope. We're <laughs> going to talk about that in a few minutes. Let's start, though, with a couple fun facts. You've been doing some number counting in the city of New Hope. What are a few facts that residents might want to know? Well, I just looked at, I got something in the mail on the 2020 census. Now, it seems like they could have had this number out sooner, but it takes a while for all that to come out. So in New Hope, we have 21,000. 986 people and 9,403 housing units. So a housing unit is a house, a townhouse, an apartment. So it averages about 2.4 people per housing unit. I just thought that was a fun fact. Now, if Susie had her baby, it's probably up another one or two. That's right. Interesting numbers for people to know. Let's move on to the elections. The time is now to start some voting for the primary process. Give us some reminders about voting this year. Okay, so the primary is August 9th. The primaries are really important because if you don't make it to the primary, you won't get on the ballot. And so uh, they're scrambling right now to get that primary, get the voters out. So you should have gotten a little postcard in the mail and it'll tell you where you're supposed to vote. Do pay attention to that because a lot of the lines have changed just because when they redistrict, some of those lines change. And so you may be voting at a different place than you're used to voting. So look at that postcard. If you threw it away, you can always call City Hall and they'll tell you where you're supposed to go to vote if you give them your address. Now, with that said, you can vote at City Hall between 8 and 4.30. Uh, that's early voting. So you'll fill out your forms and put it in an envelope and put it in another box. But after the 6th of August, you'll actually be able to put it into the machine at City Hall. You can do that this coming Saturday. You can actually vote from got to get the times there for that. You can vote from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at City Hall. And uh, then on Monday, you can vote at City Hall from 8 to 4.30. That's Monday the 8th. Mm -hmm. But after that, you have to go to your voting place. So if you want to vote early, you can until the 8th of August. But after that, on the 9th, you have to go to your polling place. And of course, you can't vote after the 9th of August because the voting's done. So it's important that you vote in that primary and you can register at the polls, but you need a, a photo ID that shows your picture and you need a statement that shows your address. Okay. That can all be on your driver's license if it's correct, but a lot of times if people move and they didn't get that changed yet, they need something that has their address on it. So those two pieces of information, you can register at the polls and vote. All right, a lot of information there. If you wanna find out more, go to the city's website, newhopemn.gov. Let's move ahead to community development, a number of things happening here. First update is around 39th in Wisconsin. Give us a little update on that property. Well, there's a group home there and they've had some disorderly behavior. And so uh, our ordinance says if you're a rental property and that's what group homes are, if you've had three uh, violations in a 12 month period, we can revoke uh, your rental license, which means they can no longer um, operate as a group home there. Well, last week we actually revoked that license. And so they have 45 days to move the residents out of there into some other group home facility but they cannot be at that facility for a year. And the, the owner cannot apply for a license for a year. He can maintain the licenses that he has on the other groups, homes, but he can't apply for a new one. Mm -hmm. So um, we're trying, most of our group homes in New Hope, and there's a lot of them, are very good, but there's a few that aren't. And when they're not good, they need to be taken care of. And it's not fair to the, the vulnerable adults that live there, and it's not fair to the neighbors to have that kind of group home by you. So we do appreciate when the neighbors tell us that there's a problem, because then we can look into that and take care of that. Next item under community development is something called safe routes to school. We talked about this a little bit before, but it looks like things are moving ahead. What's the latest there? We got some federal money. Well, we applied for some federal money and we're second in line to get it. So we're probably going to. And that's going to happen on 62nd at Boone at Meadow Lake School. So what they're looking at is putting some extensions for the kids. So it's a bit, very busy intersection, by the way. Mm -hmm. We want to make it easier for those kids to get across. We want to get rid of that turn lane. Uh, we need to put some ADA uh, things in so the kids can get up on the curbs. And it's just going to improve that. That's the good news. The bad news is if we get that, they won't start doing anything till 2026. Mm -hmm. But at least those little munchkins at Middle Lake won't be in graduating from high school by the time they start. 
these things take forever, not only to apply for the money, but to get the money and then go through the whole process of what we're doing. They don't just give us the money and say, do whatever you feel like it. Mm -hmm. We have to, there's a lot of paperwork goes into that, but that's going to get done. All right, we'll keep people up to date. Let's move to scattered site housing. A few updates here. The first is 4201 Boone, the former treehouse property. How is that moving ahead? Well, we're waiting for the engineer to give us some uh, some grading and some utility information. And once we have that, then we'll go up for bids probably in mid-August for a demolition. We'll get those back and then we'll vote on that on the 12th of September. Again, this all takes a long, long time to happen. Once the demolition is voted on, that team typically will start right away quick after that, and you'll see that coming down. So I'm guessing that'll be down before the end of the, the year, at least. And I don't know if we'll be able to get a house up there. Uh, actually, two houses are being put there. Don't know if we'll be able to get those up in time for the winter, but something's happening. Okay, here's another property where things are happening. It looks like it might be ahead of the game here. It's 5306 Rhode Island, and we're under uh, building permit time. Is that correct? We, we finally issued the building permit to them, and they're just going to start building right away. That one should be up in, uh, I would say, 60 days. A lot of times those houses sell before they even get finished. So mm -hmm. it's one of the scattered site houses going up, and it should be fun to watch get built. Final note is 5802 Boone Avenue. Again, tell us about some of the progress happening there. Oh, that one. <laughs> well, that was for closed upon, and we don't have eminent domain, so we can't just take it. When it's closed upon, it goes to a sheriff's sale, and from there, uh, they have to wait and let the owners rebuy it if they choose. We don't think they will. And then it goes back to the bank, and we can buy it from the lender if the price is right. If the price is right, uh, we will, and then we'll go through that whole process of tearing it down. In the meantime, there are a bunch of bags of garbage in the back, and so those have been removed by the city, and now there's some other outdoor storage that we're waiting for trucks and personnel to be able to remove that. Some of that stuff we can't move, the city can't move, but it can be removed. And by the way, when we do remove it, because we don't own that house, when we do remove it, we charge that back to either the owner of the house, which is the lender, the bank, or um, if somebody's living there, we charge it back to them. So the bank will have to pay for that to have that removed. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move ahead to some things happening in the business networking area. This group is meeting. And if you're watching this very early in its run, you might be able to get to the August meeting again. When and where is that? It's Wednesday at 8.30. It's at the golf course. And it should be a fun meeting. So Mark Severson, who runs the golf course, will tell us a little bit about how that goes and what he's doing. So at the last business networking meet, meeting, we had about 30 people there with really good turnout. So we're hoping to get that too. Uh, a lot of small businesses come, they exchange a lot of information, a lot of business cards are flying around and, and there's donuts. So what, what could be wrong about that? So that's 8.30 on the 3rd. All right, then the next one is coming up on September 7th at 2 p.m. We'll pass along more information as we get closer to that. Let's move ahead to the police department. You wanted to mention a few things about community engagement. Again, the great ways police are connecting with residents. Well, our police officers think that's really important, as do I. And so they're doing all kinds of things. Uh, they just had coffee with a cop at um, uh, Anthony James Apartments. They called bingo at the lodge in New Hope. And they're also meeting with the, uh, my two captains are meeting with the command staff and Crystal Police as well as West Metro. So they can just uh, make sure they're all coordinated on the same page. Just a note, if you would like to have coffee with a cop or them, the cops that come out and tell you about stuff, if you're an apartment or just want to have a driveway meeting with them, all you have to do is call the non-emergency number and they'll schedule something to come out. They're still doing copsicles, by the way. Okay. So look at the website, the police department website, to see when they'll where they'll be passing out copsicles, which are really popsicles given out by cops. Very nice. So all right. It's all part of the community engagement that we're going through. Yeah, great ways to connect. Let's move ahead to public works. Something we've talked about in previous years is utility bill certification. Remind us of this process and what happens within the city at this time of the year. Well. The city buys all of our water. We put it in those big water tanks and then we, we send it out to houses. That means whatever we pay for that water, all of the citizens in New Hope are paying for that. When you don't pay for your water, you, you're, you're not paying your water bill. And 
that water bill of certification rate now is three hundred fifteen thousand six hundred nine dollars. Mm. So they have a few months in which to pay that. Of course, there's fees attached now because they're late on paying that, and that will go down considerably. And when it's done, going down, wherever the, I don't remember what the date line is, uh, then it will be uh, put on your taxes. Okay, that's what the certification is. It'll be put on your taxes, so you will pay it. But uh, if you wait too long, then it gets on your taxes, and then you pay more fees because it's been uh, certified to your taxes. So it really behooves you to pay that bill if you can. Mm -hmm. All right, let's head out to the streets. A couple projects to update residents on. The first is some seal coating and fog sealing. Where is the area that this activity is taking place? And what are some reminders about traveling around these areas? Well, first of all, they're striping Boone Avenue. And it seems like they stripe Boone Avenue every other week, but <laughs> apparently they don't, but it just seems like that. Well, when they fog seal, what they do is they put down that rock and then they put the tar over it. And then they put something else called a fog seal. And that fog seal is really sticky okay. and gooey. And so they're asking people not to drive on that. If you're in an area that's going to get fog sealed this week, you should have gotten a letter in the mail. If you didn't get that letter, I'm just asking you, please don't drive on it for four or five hours because it has to sit in there. If you do, a lot of times it'll just wreck that. And then we have to go back and redo it. Again, that costs money. Mm -hmm. So where they're doing that is east of Winnetka from 44th to about 47th and a half. And also on 49th, right around Oregon, they'll be doing that. So look for that to be done and please stay off it if, if you possibly can. Of course, if there's an emergency, the emergency vehicles will always get to you somehow. So mm -hmm. that's not a problem. But we'd rather don't walk on it because you'll be so sorry you did. And please don't drive on it either. It makes it hard for the guys to redo it. Another project that's taking place that's not on the roads, but under the roads, but affecting some streets is something going on with Centerpoint. Where is this activity taking place and who is doing this work? So Centerpoint Energy, along with Michaels Corporation, so you might see that big red truck. Uh, Michaels is actually a subcontractor of Centerpoint. So they're replacing the uh, gas lines on Gettysburg and about Bass Lake Road. So there'll be a little delay there. Um, it's not something the city does. So if you've got a problem with it, um, please call Michaels or Centerpoint. Uh, if that doesn't work, you can always call the city and we'll direct you and give you the phone number to call them. But that shouldn't be more than a couple of days of, of work for them to get that done. The city has no part in that at all. That's all done by Centerpoint. Good to know. All right, let's move to Park and Rec. We've got a lot to talk about here, as you might imagine, at this time of the year. The first thing is some Park and Rec classes coming up tied in with Cooper High School. What's happening there? So the track and tennis clubs are having a camp at Cooper this week. And uh, there's a skateboard camp at the New Hope Skateboard Park this week. So there's still some camps going on and you could have found those in your summer uh, in motion. But now here comes the next one. Yes. And this is the fall in motion with the right? with five little dancers on the front. It's so there cute. they are. So you can sign up online or uh, by phone right now or the registration that's on page 23. If you did not get your in motion in the mail, call City Hall. They'll mail you one or you can go into City Hall and pick one up. There's Perfect. tons of information in there. And really, you should be signing up for those gymnastics classes, those dance classes, the football and, and softball things now because that, that was the time to do that. Just a note, when they're looking for coaches for the sports teams, and if you are a parent coach, uh, they will refund your child's entry fee okay. at the end of the season. So please volunteer to be a coach because these little guys need coaches and we don't hire professional coaches to coach the teams. Mom right. and dads do that. That certainly helps out. Let's talk about some great activity happening over at the New Hope Civic Center, the pavilion there. You've heard some great music over the past couple of weekends. There's a good reason for that. What's happening there and can we still listen in? This is the last week for Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Code. That's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It starts at 8 o'clock. They're asking for a $5 donation, but if you don't have that, that's just fine. They, we want you to see it. They tell me it gets a little crowded, and you can't see real good if you're in the back. So if you uh, want to be able to hear and see well, get early. Get there early. Bring a bag of popcorn, or you can buy some popcorn from the re refreshment stand that they have in the back. But it's just amazing. And the dream coat, the costumes are out of this world. So 
My it's family and I had a chance to get there this past Friday and thumbs up. It was an outstanding performance, but you're right. The crowd does get rather big. So get there early, save your seat, maybe bring some dinner along to eat while you're waiting. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Right. Quite the show. All right. Let's move ahead to some other things happening in Park and Rec. The first is softball. What point of the season are we in with the softball teams? So the men's softball leagues are playing on Wednesday and I'm sorry, Monday and Wednesday, and this is their playoffs. So they'll do that and limit it down and have a, a first place winner, of course. And then the, um, what else is happening? But just the playoffs with the leagues. The women's softball, okay. I think, is done. But the other thing that's going on is Hennepin County gave us a grant yeah. to put some signs in the park as part of Step to It. And those signs are going up at Civic Center, Lions, Hidden Valley, and Northwood Parks. And basically, uh, they show you a picture of the park, they show you the trails, they show you the mileage around the trails, and it's in Spanish as well as English, and there's a QR code. Now, I have no idea how to use a QR code, and I don't speak Spanish, but I got the English down. And so those signs will be going up thanks to Hennepin County for that. Yeah, definitely will help a lot of people as they head to the parks. Let's talk a little bit about some registration of other things that are coming up here. Again, gymnastics, dance, sports teams coming up. And again, there's some funds available as well to help people out with Park and Rec. We mentioned that as well. So if people want more information about that, of getting in some of these classes, again, city's website, newhopemn.gov is a great place just, to go. Yeah. Let me just say something about the matching funds. Yeah. So um, if, if you can't afford the funds or that's a problem for your family, you can uh, get half of the fund or fees paid with this fund they have to do that. But you have to apply in person and you have to be a resident of New Hope and you have a driver's license to prove that. But you can get some help because sometimes those fees get a little high mm -hmm. and we want to help whenever we can. We want the kids to partake in the programs whenever possible. So if you uh, need to do that, you can always call Park and Rec Department and get some more information or just show up with your uh, ID and apply for that. Very good. Now let's head to Park and Rec, something a little different than the programs. Here is Park and Rec helping out in the parks in a number of different ways. There's something that is called the Weed Treatment Sign-Off Form. Mayor, what is this form? Why is it important for residents to take some time to do that? Well, because of Emerald Ashbor, a lot of trees were taken down on the boulevards and they ground up the stumps. So of course that kills all the grass. And you know what happens when grass gets killed and it's hot, weeds grow. Mm -hmm. And so they sent out forms and you have to return that form or they will not spray for weeds on your boulevard so if you don't want that spray to be done or you lost the form you need to get another one call city hall and tell them you need that but very shortly they'll start that spraying and they'll only spray the uh, boulevards that for weeds that sent that form back so it's very important to get that that form back or at least call and find out because you might have thrown the form away so call and find out very good. And along that same line, the city staff working hard to schedule oak wheat treatment, oak wilt treatment, and also, again, more tagging of the infested trees. So this work with the emerald ash borer just continues on in many, many ways. Let's move ahead to sentence to serve. You see some crews out at some of the parks helping out. What is that crew doing? Well, sentence to serve is when you uh, did something naughty and the judge says you have to do some community service, this is the community service. Okay. So the city hires sentence to serve to come out. They come out in a big white van. And what they're doing is putting mulch around all the trees, at least in the golf course. And they'll be doing that some on the streets too. They're putting mulch around those trees to help keep the water in where they can. They're also doing some tree trimming and they're picking up stuff off the golf course. We pay a small amount to have them come out. And it's really beneficial because we don't have to hire another company to do that. And usually it's uh, five or six people that are supervised in the mm -hmm. van. They're really good workers and it's nice to have them out. And we really love to see them at our golf course because they, they have lunch there too. Very nice. So, Lions Park basketball court getting a little attention. What is happening there? There is. Well, they're, they're refinishing the basketball court at Lions Park. That one gets a lot of use. And of course, in this weather, uh, things crack and we don't want cracks in those basketball courts because that's dangerous to the players and but we want to keep the players coming to the courts too so they'll they'll finish that i think next week 
Very good. We have talked quite a bit over the months about the plant sale that happened at that golf course right behind you and recently a presentation to the council about that plant sale. So tell us the great news. $1,260 is what we made on that, that plant sale. And typically um, I plant the plants and we sell them and I just give them money to the golf course. And I don't even ask what they're doing with it because I trust Mark to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So what he's done with it is he bought a bunch of pots. Some of them were planted by Sentence to Serve. Some of them were planted by Seth. And uh, some of them were planted by um, Stantec, who came out and did some planting for us. Sure. So they did that. They did some irrigation. And they're using the rest of the money to plant trees at the golf course that had to be taken down because of Emerald Asphore. So the money all gets spent very well. And it gets spent at the golf course. And I'm really pleased to do that for them. Thanks to everyone who participated and purchased some plants. Speaking of the golf course, how's the activity level there? What's going on and what should we plan ahead for at the golf course? Well, that back patio gets a lot of use. So there right. was an outing event with one of the, the Valley Community Church last week, and they also rented out the back for a birthday party. This is the time if you're looking at having a party at the golf course, this is the time to schedule that. Just reminding people that after the golf season ends, that clubhouse is available and it's really pretty for Christmas parties, for gatherings, for showers. That usually happens uh, about November when mm -hmm. that's available, when the golfing stops. So now's the time to rent it. It's really reasonable. You can bring in your own food. You don't have to use a caterer that we tell you about. You can bring in your own food. Um, it's just a nice, clean place to have it. And it's reasonable. Yeah, very, very popular. Let's head over to the ice arena. Lots of activity there. Even though it's 90 degrees outside, they're cool inside. What are they doing at the ice yeah. arena? Well, first of all, if you haven't been there recently, go over and look. There's a guy at the ice arena that's really into plants and flowers. And he has planted all kinds of pots in front of the ice arena. It's just beautiful. Nice. So inside, of course, there we still have open skating on Fridays and Sundays. And uh, I think it's $5 to skate. So that's always fun. Of course, the men's league is skating there. Uh, we rented out to Minnesota Hockey. That's the uh, our, our professional hockey team. Some of those players go there to practice. You can always come in and watch those players practice. I don't know what the time frame is that they're practicing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're doing some uh, dry land training, of course. And they're doing some camps with the uh, goaltenders and the premier kids that are, are skating. So there's... Lots of stuff that goes on, and they're starting to schedule, oh, I hate to say this too, fall and winter ice time, but it's yeah. coming. Hard to believe, and here's another sign season's changing. We hop over to the aquatic park, and it looks like some of the lessons and some of the swim meets are starting to wrap up for the year as well. They are. So this is the last week of the swimming team, or another swimming team, the, the, um, the lessons for the mm -hmm. swim kids. And it's also the last week for uh, the teams that are practicing their lap swimming. So after this week, that'll be open to everyone. But of course, the pool doesn't open till noon. You can still come and do walking around the pool and you can come and do lap swimming in the mornings after those, uh, those practice games are over with. And of course, the pool's open and you can rent that for parties and bring a, a party to that. And, and the other thing that happened is this last weekend, our, some of our lifeguards and some of our uh, service people, the customer service people, did some com competition in Bloomington, mm -hmm. showing off their life their life saving skills. So I said, so what does that mean? And they said, well, one of them is you have to put on a sweatshirt, swim, come back, take off the sweatshirt, give it to the next team player who puts it on and swims. And they're they're doing all kinds of fun things, and the kids have such a ball doing it. So I don't know how our team fared this year. I'll, I'll know that next week, I suppose. Got it. Well, great work by the staff all year. They were very, very busy. Last couple notes, and we're going to have a calendar of events coming up here of some of the things that are going on in mid to late August. But, Mayor, you just wanted to make a quick mention of a couple of the weekly favorites, the farmer's market and food trucks. Tell us more. I did. and I'm, But first, I'm going to tell you what the, the fire department told me, that cigarette smoking and cigarettes are causing small wildfires. And please don't just throw your cigarette out the window. It is so dry out there that weeds and paper in the street are catching on fire and it's keeping the fire department busy. So mm. put the cigarette out in your ashtray, in your car, 
or at least put it out and don't just throw it out the window. They've also got some tips. And I think CCX Media did this, some tips on uh, summer fire hazards. Right. So again, Especially in your garages, people spending a lot of time in their garage and there's lots of things inside your garage that just might be flammable. So be careful in there. Don't, don't put your grill in the garage. Yeah, not a good <laughs> idea. That's not a good thing. So the two things, uh, the uh, food truck Friday is 11 to 2. And that's at the back part of the, of the lot at City Hall. Uh, usually they have three to four trucks that are there. It seems to be really busy. People get the food and they go to the pavilion to eat it. It's nice and shady. And then the farmer's market is on the street in front of City Hall on Saturday. And that's 9 till 1. So those two events are coming, plus all the events that are on your calendar that you're going to show. Very good. Mayor, thanks once again for all the information and your time today. We'll look forward to talk to you again next week. And as the mayor said, stick with us. Here's some other things that you might want to put on your calendar coming up here in August. Have a great day, Mayor. Thanks, Dave. You too. Bye-bye. Learn more about the connection at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.